It's a bear. Got that one wrong today, I'm sure. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale-by-the-Sea. Uh, and how can you say it's not beautiful? I, I, even though I say it every day, it is. Take a look at this weather. 72 degrees out. Uh, the ocean looks beautiful. Looks like people are getting ready to have a wonderful day out there, living their lives as they should. And uh, uh, I really love this place. Take a look at this too. This is uh, the uh, square pointing down towards me real quick. And if you look and you walk down this sidewalk, I wouldn't walk in the middle of the street here. And uh, I'm trying to point my building out. See that building? I'm right behind here, live right now. <laughs> As this uh, uh, is the live uh, video feed of uh, Lauderdale by the Sea in the opposite direction from the beach, in case you were curious. Um, Pretty cool cam out here. This is the Lauderdale by the Sea City uh, webcams. And uh, let's take a look at uh, what uh, is going on today. Here's my little meme for the day. When the people find that they can vote themselves money, that will herald the end of the republic. And folks, we've been there for quite some time. There's all kinds of stuff going on uh, in the political and the economic fronts, which is uh, uh, great for precious metals. But the real question is, have we met our, uh, what, what calls here the metaphorical Minsky moment? Uh, hedge finance, speculative finance, Ponzi finance. I think we've gone through the Ponzi finance right here. Are we nearing our Minsky moment? You know, uh, <laughs> I think we possibly are. But let's get into uh, precious metals and a few other things first. Uh, well, before I do that, uh, the Minsky moment. Some people uh, may not know exactly what a Minsky moment is. Uh, you know. Uh, and uh, uh, I didn't at one time, so let me kind of define this right here. Minsky moments refer to the onset of a market collapse brought on by the reckless speculative activities that define an unsustainable bullish period. Hmm, sound familiar? A Minsky moment is named after economist Hyman Minsky and defines a point in where time uh, that I didn't know. I guess I figured it was named after a guy, but I didn't know his name was Hyman, so <laughs> I'm learning something new here as well. And defines a point in time where the sudden decline in market sentiment inevitably leads to a market crash. Uh, and uh, boy, I think we precariously sit on that line. Take a look at this little uh, graph here. Uh, again, we've got, you know, hedge finance, obviously, we've gone through uh, uh, speculative finance. And I really sincerely believe if you look around you, you know that we've been in the Ponzi finance moment of uh, the, the Minsky curve here. And uh, I think we're pretty much approaching, we've got to be at this level at least, somewhere close here. I don't know uh, exactly when we go over the edge and uh, hit that uh, panic button. But uh, Minsky moments refer to the onset of a market collapse brought on by reckless speculativity, which we just talked about. Um, Minsky moment crisis generally occur because investors engage in an excessive aggressive speculation, sound familiar, take on additional credit risk during bull markets. Uh, Minsky moments define the tipping point when a speculative activity reaches an extreme that is unsustainable, leading to a rapid price deflation and unpreventable market collapse. Um, so, we, are we in our Minsky moment? You know, it's tough to say. The markets are up a little bit. We're going to take a look at that. Uh, I'm going to talk about a few things in today's video. Uh, I'm, going to, uh, sh I'm also going to do something that I am a specialist in, which is product. I know product better than any of the talking heads out there uh, on YouTube land or uh, TV land or even the uh, print world, pretty much. That's my, that's my specialty is understanding products and premiums. I'm a physical precious metal dealers. I don't deal in papers. I don't deal in graphs. In fact, I'm learning a lot about paper markets and, and graphs just like you are, and I'm kind of sharing what I'm learning as I go as well, okay? But my real specialty, again, uh, which would be hard to beat me on, is uh, I understand premiums. I understand uh, product, where it comes from. I understand what the best deals out there. I understand what is way overpriced. I understand what's best for customers, uh, you know, based on, again, my experience of doing this since 1977 I started. I'm a second generation dealer. Uh, my father is a coin and bullion dealer, uh, and I grew up in the business, and uh, I know this business very well. I've, I've lived, eaten, and slept it, <laughs> slept it, 24-5. Uh, uh, even more than that, uh, 24 6, because you know, you got to look at the uh, uh, Sunday night markets, which I started following. Speaking of markets, man, gold and silver is just crazy. 
Uh, so I'm going to discuss, uh, I'm gonna, I pulled up JM's uh, uh, website out here. I didn't want to pull up the other, you know, I advertised myself to beat JM, Atmex, and SD Bullion on their uh, common, you know, their better deals as far as their better products, which when I say better products, I don't mean better in as far as looking or better as far as anything special in the metal, which is not, it's all silver. I mean better premiums. I, I only want to deal in better premium products, so I'm not going to sell you overpriced shit. Um, so I'm going to go into JM and give you some good uh, ideas of what the best deals out there because that's what I can do better than most people. But meanwhile, uh, let's just take a look at prices and see what we got going on here. And uh, currently, uh, eight, oh, we're going to talk. I want to talk about the Bofa deal too, uh, uh, but because if if this number is I mean, if if we have an idea of where Bofa has paid for this 800 million ounce short position that they uh, uh, are presumed to have. Uh, man, they got some big losses coming, and we'll discuss that in a bit as well. Uh, look at this range, 1836 to 1848. I happened to be up quite late last night to about 2 a.m. I didn't see any much market activity in the middle of the night. It really happened again where in the comics markets, but where to the upside instead of the downside. So this is kind of getting even odder and odder in my opinion. Uh, you know, a speculation on my part is uh, perhaps the up price in silver is Bofa trying to buy back the silver to repay JP the uh, uh, least uh, least silver again. That's it's presumed that Bofa purchased silver from JPM physical silver, took that physical silver and sold it. You know why did they sell it? Not you know some people are going to oh they just wanted to drive the market down. Uh, no, it's probably an arbitrage deal of some sort where Bank of America saw the opportunity to to buy this physical silver at this particular price, sell it somewhere else for more money, use that cash to invest in the. Uh, uh, whatever they do, okay, uh, but they do have to replace. Unlike an e, uh, unlike the uh, uh, crooked Comex, uh, where it can be rolled over and uh, they pay a big fee for that or whatever. Uh, uh, J Bank of America has to pay back this uh, 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 silver to JPM, according to again according to the reports and what I've been reading from Ted Butler. And uh, I think Ted Butler is probably one of the brightest minds out there when it comes to uh, what's really going on in the silver markets. So uh, uh, is this perhaps, this up price, perhaps Bofa trying to buy back their uh, silver that they've uh, sold off? I don't know. Speculative on my part. And again, I got to send Mr. Uh, Butler an email and see if he responds and see what his opinion is as well. Uh, are they buying it back? <clears throat> Have they already paid it back? What's the details on this? Did they sell it as soon as they got it, or are they holding on to it? Are they speculating on silver? Well, I'll get into that in a moment as well. Uh, let's look at the ranges on silver, 2410. Uh, again, 50 cent ranges like we've seen this week. 2460 uh, is the high, which we're looking at right now. So we're sitting in the high territory. And uh, platinum, boy, just sailed past that 1050 mark today. Low at 1018, a high at 1056. Let's take a look at the 24 mark, hour markets. And as I said, I didn't see much happen until this morning. I was up pretty late uh, watching this. And uh, yeah, take a look here. Uh, all through the evening, not much. And look where the uh, market starts going up in uh, uh, gold prices, incrementally too. Uh, so here's our second, that's yesterday. So here's our second day uh, and a, another leg up. Uh, moving into uh, a higher territory. I think we have pretty much busted the 200-day moving average in silver, I mean in gold right here. I believe the 200-day moving average was what, eight, eight, a little over 1800 or something like that, 1810 here. Uh, we pretty much busted above that and uh, it's looking good. Uh, gold's looking very promising. And silver, again, just as well. It's hard to figure out you know, what's going on here, but overnight, uh, boy, I've been having some problems with the uh, Kitco 24-hour chart here. Give me one second, and let me see if I can refresh that somehow. There we go. Visit page. All right. Um, there you go. Same thing. Look at look at that though. Kind of like a steady uh, uh, lineup yesterday, and then last night, as I said, it was just flat line most of the evening. Uh, when, when I went to sleep, uh, uh, I got up this morning. Same thing. But uh, New York again in the Comex markets, obviously Crimex markets. Uh, so the market is up in the Crimex markets and. Uh, is this Bofa trying to buy back their uh, uh, silver short position on the COMEX markets? They're going to ask for delivery. I don't know. I don't know how that works. Uh, again, I'd like to uh, uh, maybe converse with Ted Butler, send an email and see what his opinion is. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, stock market here as well. 
Uh, surprisingly, I shouldn't say surprisingly, but we've got a bounce here, which I kind of expected yesterday because, you know, they had a bad week all week pretty much in equities. Uh, so, but as I said, is this the Minsky moment for uh, the equities market? Is it the Minsky? You know, people are talking real estate markets as well are looking pretty shaky and thin. You know, with this collapse with the China real estate market, would that carry over to the United States? I don't know. I'm not sure, but I do know that uh, uh, you know we've got a huge amount of homes being built right now. Interest rates look like they may go up. A lot of people feel that housing is overpriced. I mean, there's all kinds of things and dynamics in there that could cause real estate prices to fall as well. And as I said, I believe we're in the greatest bubble of all time. Since 2008, they've not fixed anything, folks. Uh, you know, my, old, my, my analogy I've used over and over and over is that uh, it's like it, uh, 2008 was like the patient got a gaping wound through it. You know what I mean? Like someone shot a cannonball through a person. And what does the uh, Fed come in and do? Instead of trying to fix the whole thing up and replace, you know, replace stuff and maybe make the best of it, uh, they just stick a giant gauze over the whole thing, a giant Band-Aid, and uh, just try to stop the bleeding. Uh, and while they're injecting more plasma in the patient, and that's all they did. They just kept injecting more money into a dying patient, which would have been the economy after 2008, more and more and more and more. Uh, and what that did is it created a bunch of, look, uh, what was the uh, thing here? One second here. Uh, I created a bunch of this as well because prosperity, you know, people can now, you know, governments can spend money they don't have, which they still do. Uh, but, you know, speculative finance, hedge finance, I mean, are, where are we? We're past the Ponzi. We really are, folks. You know that as well as I do. So uh, let's take a look at, uh, I'm not going to get too heavy in the stocks, but boy, uh, I believe we are in the greatest bubble of all time, which I call the G-boat. Um, even though I'm not invested in any in Bitcoins, I'm learning about it and stuff, I'm not a big fan of it to me. But to me, it's like an exciting casino now. I'm looking at it more like a, an exciting casino that's allowed to happen in a free marketplace. Uh, in a free capitalistic marketplace. So it's kind of fun to watch, really, too. It's, it's like me watching, uh, going to Vegas and watching uh, people, you know, the market, not just crazy numbers. Lots of volatility, uh, but uh, that market looks like it's kind of sideways, you know. Bitcoin is at a high of $60,000. People are expecting it to be so much higher right now uh, because of inflation. Uh, and a lot of people are saying the death of gold, gold's dead, uh, crypto's gonna take its place. Well certainly doesn't even look close to that, folks. It looks like cryptos are pretty much dying. And I said that a while back ago, the days of the uh, cryptos going crazy uh, and, uh, and people becoming millionaires because they bought uh, one Bitcoin for five bucks and it went to 60. That's how, that's how the millionaires were made, folks. Uh, anybody after that is pretty much, you know, made a little bit of money, lost a little bit of money. Uh, and it's gonna be relegated to uh, probably a, a glorified money market at some point, if they don't take it over or make it illegal. That's my opinion. Uh, oh, hey, in case I forgot to mention it, uh, I'm on G-E-T-T-R now, and the name of uh, my name, <laughs> it's Gold Silver Coins, at Gold Silver Coins on G-E-T-T-R. So if you would and you'd like to follow me, I'm going to post some videos out there, and it's a great way to kind of talk to some of you folks as well uh, on a platform other than YouTube. Uh, so I am on G-E-T-T-R right now. I'm probably going to get on a couple other forums as well. Uh, so uh, I'll put that out there as soon as I uh, uh, sign up. I, what is the other platform? Rumble or something like that. Just a secondary platform. You never know. And uh, I'm also on Reddit too. Uh, I love the Reddit uh, apes out there. And uh, uh, I'm listed as uh, because, as you can see right there, Brian Kuzmar, Gold and Silver Pro, second generation full-time rare coin and precious metal deal since 1977. Uh, host of the daily okay <laughs> anyways uh, boy that's like a pump me up there um, I post a lot of my videos out there and I do comment out there as well so you can find me there too well let's do something I'm really good at we're gonna get into the BOFA deal here and uh, some other things but uh, what, what my specialty is is buying and selling the physical product uh, I do that better than I mean I won't say better uh, there's a lot of good uh, coin dealers out there, and there's a lot of good precious metal dealers uh, that own uh, businesses out there. Uh, but one thing I do know is I know product. It's, uh, uh, I've been in this business since 1977. I've been in this particular location since 95. Um, and I know this business well. So I'm going to discuss some, some of the prices out here. And uh, as you know, I have a brick and mortar here in Florida. I don't have an online presence. I may do it. People keep asking me to do an online presence, but uh, for now, I'm uh, just a physical, uh, local South Florida dealer. So if you live in the southern part of Florida, you don't mind driving from central Florida, um, 
Um, <laughs> I, I can only deal face to face with you. So uh, what, what I was going to suggest is if you don't live in my area for now, just go to find a good local dealer. Good local dealers are very, very important because you're going to want to sell this stuff someday. Uh, maybe. Some of you say you're never going to sell, but I think you'd be foolish not to sell in a, in a bubble. When gold and silver bubbles, and it will, it probably will, uh, I don't see an Armageddon-like deal coming where, where you've got to hang on to every ounce of gold to live the rest of your life. Uh, but uh, there will become a bubble in precious metals. It'll be a good time to maybe opt out of some of it, put that money in some other places that may even produce more money for you. Uh, or buy in when precious metals drops back down again, and it will. Everything bubbles. Uh, so <laughs> what was my whole point here is, uh, oh, make a good local relationship because you may want to sell that gold and silver, and do you really want to put it in the mail? Probably not, even if you, it's insured. Who wants to deal with that kind of shit? Uh, so if you, if you have to drive an hour or two, uh, find yourself a good local coin or precious metal dealer. Uh, I like to look for someone that has at least 10 years experience or been around in that same location or generally for 10 years, has a good reputation. You can look on Google and uh, other things to find people's reputations. For the most part, uh, um, you know, if they've done some bad stuff, some people will retaliate on Google. <laughs> so. Uh, where am I going now? I'm going to kind of discuss what some of the better deals out here because I want to talk about BOFA as well. And I'm getting my hair cut at 11 o'clock, so I only got what? Uh, oh my gosh, I'm deadline, deadline. <laughs> uh, 19 minutes here, let's see here. Uh, what's the best deal that JM has out here? And uh, I can beat this price as well. It looks like they've got, <laughs> folks, I would avoid. Uh, Silver Eagles, for example, look at that one ounce, that's 28, that's not too awful bad, but uh, that's still too much in my opinion, 28, 20, no, no, it's about the same price as that, uh, you know, 32.96, $34 for that, that's per ounce, folks, I love Silver Eagles, I mean, it's a beautiful design, it's by America, it's what I'm all about, but when it comes to uh, gouging, not gouging, and it's not JM's fault, all right, uh, the mint just hasn't been producing this stuff. The demand is just stupid for it. People don't realize paying eight and nine and ten dollars over for silver eagles. There's no advantage to it, man. I'm telling you, there is none. Uh, Twenty-eight fifty-six. That's not a bad deal. Uh, Twenty-eight fifty-six. But these prices are deceptive a little bit. And I don't mean James being deceptive, but uh, let's available and in stock. Let's hit add to cart because there's your keyword as low as. 2826 as low as because a lot of customers come in and see me well they got it for twenty eight dollars and twenty eight six cents uh, and I can still beat that price even in much smaller quantities let's go there uh, well first let me see what kind of premium that is what they're asking and I'm gonna hit Siri up here uh, twenty eight point two six subtract twenty two point seven eight the answer is five point four eight what? Five dollars and four. Let me make sure I get that right. All right, twenty-two seventy-eight. Subtract twenty-eight twenty-six. That's five dollars and forty-eight cents. Really, for one ounce rounds? What's going on out there? Did the premium just shoot up to uh, uh, crazy land? Uh, let me just check. Oh no! Hang on a second. I'm looking at the wrong thing. Twenty-two. I'm thinking of last week's prices. What a dumbass. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. Oh yeah, I want your silver business. <laughs> one moment here. Uh, there we go. 28.26 subtract 24.67. I don't think Siri quite, it's heard, three. Siri quite heard me. Again, sorry to put you through this, folks. <laughs> Obviously, uh, give me one second here. 28.26 subtract 24.67. The answer is 3.59. There you go, as little as $3.59 over for one ounce silver bars. It looks like they get the buffaloes too. Uh, and, and again, uh, we could sell them for that price as well, but here's the kicker. Give me one second, add to cart. That is a 500 plus uh, order. If you were gonna order just uh, uh, less than 20 pieces, and let's say most of us are gonna order 100 to 499, 28.65 per unit. Give me one second, and let's see what that comes out to. 28.65 subtract 24.66. That would be 
So basically spot plus four bucks. Again, your local dealer should be able to beat that. I can beat that price as well for that amount of coins. I think we're at spot plus 375 for small quantities, okay? So uh, we got a really good price on those. And uh, give me one second here and let's move along. Yeah, I can, beat, I can even beat their 500 price and so should your local dealer folks. Let me reiterate, there's nothing wrong with JM Bullion. There's nothing wrong with SD Atmex. Um, I'm just very competitive local dealer. And what I'm trying to encourage you to, to do, and that's completely great in America. There should be competitive people out there. You should be able to go and buy from a local dealer cheaper than you can go online and buy it for. You know, if a dealer knows what they're doing, I don't care if it's tires, coins, or jewelry, you should be able to keep business in town, all right? And I can do it pretty easily. So I'm suspecting that you should be able to find some local dealers that should be able to do it for you as well. Again, nothing wrong with these companies. I don't want to even assume they are the 800-pound gorilla out there. Don't forget, JM Bullion is owned by Amark, who also owns, uh, not Sunshine Mint, but uh, um, Silvertown. So uh, anyway, let's take a look at some of their other products here. Uh, I can beat those numbers, but uh, I just kind of want to show you what's out there and what I think is the best deal if you had to order online. Again, I'm not looking at Atmex and I'm not looking at SD. Sometimes these guys compete against each other on prices. So some of those other guys may have prices that are a little bit less, but uh, JM Bullion is the 800 pound gorilla out there. That's for damn sure. And uh, let's take a look at gold and see what kind of products they have out in gold. In stock gold, uh, again, which I advertise to beat. Uh, let's take a look at uh, what they're showing here as low as. And again, as you know, that probably means if you're buying quantity, I'm going to hit the cart dealy here because uh, the Gold Eagles are the most popular, but folks, I wouldn't recommend them. I still think the premium, even at these levels, is too high. Let's see where they're at for uh, uh, price. Okay, here we go. Oh, I guess I'm filling up my cart with goods here. <laughs> uh, $19.30. They're full $20 per unit less on 100 plus units. All right. I can beat that price right there. I can beat that price. I can beat that price. But my, my, I believe, and let me check what their one to 10 price is, because that's the average. Joe usually comes in for one to 10. All right. A mm. little bit of coffee there. Sorry about that. And uh, yeah. you know what I just did there? It frightened me. I said, did I hit the record button? I've done this before. I've, I've talked to myself for an hour. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I did hit the record button right there. <laughs> oh, boy, it sucks getting old, man. And uh, let's see here, uh, 1952. So I'm going to use the one, uh, 10. I'm going to use the 10 number, 1952.24. So let's see where they're at, 1952.24. Uh, 1952.24, subtract 1852.24. Uh, Here's what I found. Uh-oh. Siri didn't make sense. I confused her. One that better not say a thousand too because she confuses her as well. One thousand nine hundred fifty two point two four subtract one thousand eight hundred fifty two point two four. The answer is one hundred. Okay, so uh, at ten or more coins, they're at spot plus a hundred dollars, which is about uh, uh, what is it? Uh, looks like they've lowered their price on Eagles a little bit too. That's a good deal. But remember, uh, A Mark is a uh, one. In, not many people know this. A Mark, who owns J M Bullion and also Silvertown, uh, is one of the uh, big purve <coughs> purveyors or one of the big buyers. Oh, excuse me, got a frog in my throat there. <coughs> Sorry about that. One of the big buyers of uh, uh, gold American Eagles from the U.S. men. So they have a distinct advantage on the new stuff for sure because, again, they buy it directly from the Mint. They're one of the few. There's a few big buyers that buy directly from the U.S. Mint. And uh, you have to have uh, a huge amount of uh, uh, cash assets in order to become a Mint buyer. But Amark does that. And, again, if you're curious who, who Amark is, I'll show you in a moment. Um, they actually, I got them on my ticker here. I'll show you that in a little bit as well. Let's move that. 
I wouldn't recommend gold eagles at that price. Uh, uh, and these are about 10 bucks cheaper, as low as, but remember, the, they're as low as price means you got to buy, what, 500 of them or some crazy number? Or was it 100? I forget. Uh, what's the best deal out there on this whole page? Again, which prices I can beat and your local dealer should be able to beat? Uh, because we are competitive in a free market capitalistic society. That's why we can beat their prices. Uh, one ounce uh, uh, Perth Mint Gold Bars right there. I think that's the best deal overall. And uh, uh, as I said, if you take a look at uh, what they get for their, um, let me put this here. And I have noticed if you pay credit card, any of this stuff, uh, that you pay more for it and crypto and all that stuff. So the cheapest way to buy it is with a check, apparently, uh, from what I can tell. And there you go. Um, ships within one business day. Uh, uh, their quantity is $10 less for 25 or more ounces. And uh, uh, that's not, that, that's, again, I can beat that price. I just kind of wanted to see what their quantities were on this stuff as well. Look, 100 plus for American Eagles. You can pay, again, Good deal, I can beat that price, just so should your local dealer. Uh, let's move out of here real quick and move into uh, the discussion that I wanna finish up. I got, I got a couple more minutes before I could get my hair cut, my one hair, <laughs> only teasing. Uh, GATA.org, not a lot to talk about in here, but uh, uh, where is, uh, oh actually, hang on one second. Um, we're not even going to get to GATA.org right now. I wanted to bring up the Bank of America's uh, silver position. Uh, Ted Butler right here, as you can see. I did a, if purposely I put this in on my search engine, which I use uh, DuckDuckGo, uh, uh, because they don't spy on you per se, and uh, they don't, uh, yeah, exactly. But the Bank of America silver, and I type that in. There is nothing, look at this, in news. Do you see anything in news? Uh, nothing, nothing in news about this big short position. But Ted Butler has definitely identified uh, uh, Bank of America as having a 800 million ounce uh, silver position that they have to pay off. They borrowed, this is not from Comex, Crooked Comex, apparently they borrowed physical real bars uh, from JPM to the tune of possibly 800 million, maybe more. Uh, and uh, uh, they probably, Again, I'm gonna I'm gonna email Ted. I'm assuming they sold it off, okay? And that's why we had low prices last year. You know, that's a year's worth of mining, more or less, 800 million ounces. So Bank of America bought that from JPM and sold it into the market. That would have depressed silver prices dramatically, okay? But what was uh, Bank of America thinking when they did this? Were they uh, uh, thinking this is interesting too? Because if you take a look at this article, when I type this in, I, this was kind of like a bonus article here that tells me that uh, Bank of America was expecting silver in 2020 was going to hit $50 an ounce. And uh, uh, really, uh, uh, they went from completely being bullish in 2020 to uh, 2021, uh, borrowing and maybe selling off. Again, I want to find out if they sold it. If Bank of America didn't sell that silver, which I'd find hard to believe because uh, I think Ted Butler claims that they did sell the silver, but I, I want more detail on that. If they didn't sell the silver, they're sitting pretty darn nice right now because Mr. Butler says their average all-in cost is probably around, probably, uh, speculating here is around, and, but you know, his guesses are educated. Mine are just <laughs> uh, taking what I can see here. He, he's looking at the data. I'm not looking at the data. And what Ted Butler says is that their, their average position, their average price is around 23 bucks. Uh, but what I wanted to bring up is, look, zero, zero news out there on this potential uh, uh, bank busting uh, 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 derivative. Uh, zero news. Look, uh, I mean, you know, there is right there uh, Silver Seek, you know, the, the regular silver guys, and Ted Butler talks on Silver Seek. And there, you know, you got the Reddit uh, conversation, you got uh, some YouTube videos out there, but zero news on this extremely dangerous derivative. Uh, and the derivative, this position, uh, Bank of America has is more dangerous because unlike them borrowing uh, and selling off some particular item that stays basically stable in the same price range, they bought a highly volatile asset that could kick them in the ass. And I did the math here. Based on today's math, all right, let's do it real quick here. If their average cost is 23 bucks per ounce, Bank of America, and they have uh, 800 uh, million ounces that they've shorted. Let's do the math here, ready? 800 million times 1.6. Here's what I found. Oh, cheap. Wait till I'm finished. 800 million times 1.6. The answer is 1,280,000,000. Now, 
if that's true, Bank of America has lost if they haven't repurchased this silver. And maybe that's what silver prices are up this week. Maybe this last week or two, Bank of America has been scrambling to buy this silver. Possibly, I don't know, purely speculative on my part with no data to back up with. I just, you know, my conspiracy here. Uh, but I'd sure be curious, and it seems logical. Uh, but uh, let's see what happens here. If they haven't covered this short position, Bank of America is currently out one billion two hundred and eighty million you heard the math you've seen the data uh, we know what the data is so wow wow and again what did i say zero freaking news on this folks take a look zero news um, you know type that in bank of america silver uh, bank of america uh, short position let's see if that comes up at all because that's a big one uh, my understanding is they hold a lot of derivatives too uh, way more than the silver position but uh, this silver position is way more dangerous than they're alluding to. And let's see. Uh, no, not looking for that. Not looking for that. Short position, Bank of America short. Um, see, that's it. Ted Butler right there. Look, nothing, folks. Uh, Reddit, again, Reddit. Uh, this is uh, kind of uh, disconcerting, I think, when you think that there is no uh, corporate news covering this whatsoever. All right, and it appears to be a potentially very dangerous situation for Bank of America. I'd be afraid to have my money in there. That's my opinion. What do you think? Uh, make, uh, let me know in comments below, but uh, let's keep an eye on this. Let's keep talking about this. Let's keep this out there in discussion until we get some answers, uh, and I'll let you know what I find out from Mr. Butler. I definitely have to send him an uh, 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 email for sure. And uh, not too much out here, same old stupidness. Uh, again, when government makes mistakes, they don't fix it. They just double down on it. So. Uh, that's exactly what we got going on. Uh, the Fed might be a little bit different. I think they may be more purposeful. As I said, uh, the Fed's goal is to uh, uh, take this giant dollar sinking ship, which is like the Titanic. The dollar is like the Titanic. It's not a matter of when it's going down. If it's going down, it's when it's going down. And uh, uh, bank, uh, federal bank uh, chairmen, their jobs are to to jawbone the passengers and make them feel comfortable until they slip under the water and take that first big gulp of water uh, and uh, drown. So their, their job is just to, to keep the passengers calm. That's all they can do. And try to uh, uh, make the uh, ship comfy as it's going down, uh, you know, by giving more money out, that kind of stuff. Uh, that's my opinion. That's a simple working man's version of uh, the way to look at it. Initial jobless expected surge of three months. Yeah, jobless figures came in really bad. Uh, this guy's speech yesterday was a dismal failure. Uh, God, I couldn't even watch it, you know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is not a leader. Uh, and uh, again, I didn't vote for uh, um, I didn't vote for the other administration in the last, uh, you know, I didn't vote for a red or blue last one. Last election. I'm a libertarian, of course. And uh, I don't vote lesser evils. I, I would like to vote for a, uh, a legitimately smart, intelligent uh, person that knows how to run things, uh, which I haven't seen in my lifetime yet. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, we just seem to get worse and worse. And uh, not too much to talk about. I can go into the politics and stuff, but I'm going to skip that today. Uh, that's kind of scary. Take a look at the IRS to require facial recognition to view tax returns. Hmm, we're going down the rabbit hole here, man. We're going into a dystopian type world here. I'm, 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 I'm guaranteeing it. Uh, but again, uh, are we at the Minsky moment? Is this the Minsky moment uh, economically? And just as importantly, are we at a Minsky moment politically as well? Uh, I think so. Take a look at uh, Joe Biden's. This is what I talked about yesterday. Joe Biden's uh, uh, numbers. Uh oh, I got a roll, man. There's Joe Biden's numbers right there. Uh, getting worse and worse and worse. Uh, of course, the, on the misery index, take a look at this. This was uh, Trump. Uh, this is, and uh, that's inflation. But again, I talked about this yesterday. Good video on that if you want to take a look at it. Uh, not too much to talk about on GATA.org. Uh, delightful speculation. New gold price need to back a U.S. dollar. I just don't believe that's ever going to happen. But you know, if you're a gold stacker, silver stacker, you got to have this on your uh, uh, page. Uh, because, uh, or on your bookmark bar up here, uh, because these are the guys that tell you how the game is rigged, uh, along with Ted Butler. These guys tell you how the gold game is rigged more than the silver. Uh, Ted Butler is the uh, genius behind uh, explaining how silver markets are rigged. Uh, but you, you, really a good site to read once a week. You'll learn a lot from it. I'd like to thank everybody for watching yesterday's video. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to comment on the comments today, but look at y'all. Thank you, man. You guys are so good. I do read every one of these comments. And when I say everyone, I read everyone. Uh, please stop scrolling. 
Hey, I'm sorry, Jay, can't help it, man. It's just part of uh, the whole gig here. Um, when I start to scroll, just close your eyes, dude. <laughs> so uh, thanks for watching as well. And uh, not too much I can uh, comment on here. Do you think inflation rate is equal? Every person making ten dollars. Uh, gosh, I can't answer that right now. But hey, folks, do me a favor. Um, uh, comment on uh, Linda's comment right here, and let me know what you think. And I'll try to jump in if I can. Uh, again, can't really answer much today. I just remember I am late for my appointment. I got this one hair that's just so long. <laughs> I gotta get it cut. Well, that's it. This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and of course our meme for the year. Uh, think for yourself and always question authority and question yourself, you know, question the narrative. Whose narrative are you living? Well, that's it. This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. I just closed down my website. Uh, let's see if I can open that up. There we go, CRC. There I am. Call me anytime between 10 and 4, Mondays through Fridays at 954-493-8811. Happy to help you out with your precious metals purchases. And uh, I think that's it. I think we're going to close it up. And hey, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and follow me on Getter as well. Have a great day and talk to you soon. Bye now.